Last but not least, Gayla Bazori at Moore's apartment. All contact with the individual who issued the alert has been lost. Gayla must go to Jason Moore's home to find out what has happened and bring Moore back to the prince. Well, the person who issued the alert is Wu, not Jason though. 50. We have 50 experience here. What can we do? Gilab is pretty good at talking. But compared to someone like, I don't know, like Beryl who has four in these things, of course, we're not really getting there. Oh, we can't actually even increase these because the cost is too high. We're going to be looking through somebody's apartment today. Hmm. Sense the unseen. We have this already. Oh, this doesn't even actually... Yeah, it's just one thing. We also have dominate as a venture. Presence. Influence the emotions of people around me. I'll leave the disciplines for now. I think it's okay. Because I feel like we see these things, these attributes and skills, more often than we see discipline things. Security, technology. Well, deduction... Looking at the cost here... It's so easy to want to invest into everything a little bit because the level 1 cost is only 10. But at level 3, it's 60 already, and I just can't... I can't afford that. You should be a good talker though, shouldn't you, Caleb? Yeah, celerity... Okay. This physical thing, saying that it's good for intimidation and celerity. I don't even have celerity. That's a MM thing. But it's good for intimidation, if that counts for anything. How can I use my points here? I got These are all 30. I don't want to put it into... Or, mm, it seems kind of crappy to put it... But I also don't want to leave points hanging because we can't really get new points until the end. Technology, security... Hack into these devices. Usually, for security and technology, I feel like we can either find the code. Like hopefully, we can find the code somewhere. As opposed to having the usability. So maybe I should put this into something else then. But I can't do any level 3s. I just can't. Okay, I'll, I'll just do this then. I know it's kind of... I feel like this is pretty insane though. Really? Persuasion and rhetoric. Um. Okay, you know what? I, I will do that just to use up all the points. Ah, this is killing me. Or, you know what? I'm sorry, I keep changing my mind. I'll do this. Yeah. Is it possible to clear all objectives in a scene without having a certain skill? I hope so. Hmm, nice badge. <laughs> Keep an eye on the elevator. I'm I'm gonna go wait oh. for forensics. <laughs> okay. Let me know when oh, they get here. Excuse me. Is that an FBI badge? Message from the sheriff. Prince asked more for five reports. If I can't bring back their author, I must bring back the reports at least. I'll know them when I see them. There's my pager. Reports on the primogen. Moore spent lavishly to impress his guests. Oh, I forgot about Jara being a primogen. So one of the, the primogen we know are they're kidnapped. The religious people have them. That's not good. That's not a good sign. <laughs> that is also not good. Wait, would the yellow tape really say crime scene do not cross like that? <laughs> crime scene? Oh, there's the there's the full tape. I appreciate the the immersion there. Somebody put it up and you know they just left the roll on the table there. Special Agent Smith. The FBI! Finally, some backup! Lieutenant's expecting you. Straight ahead. Watch out for the bloodstains. Forensics hasn't been through here yet. Got it. Okay, so by comparison, this is a place where they've been waiting for the FBI for a long time. Whereas, 
at the party, they were there immediately because they were the ones killing the vampires. So they don't really care about this place. Go ahead. It's okay. All right. The victim lost a lot of blood. Now we don't have any aspects or anything, so I can't even activate anything. Hmm. Yeah, well, I'm still looking. Oh. Oh my god. Don't worry. I'll finish here and then I'm on my way. Breathe. You're gonna be okay. Lieutenant Anderson, I'm in charge of the investigation. Special Agent Smith, FBI. Really? Smith? Is that some kind of joke? No, why? Uh, let it go. Never mind. There are real I'll give Smiths. You the DL. We got a call from the caretaker around 2.15. He told us that one of his residents was brought in with an injury carried by his bodyguards. We sent a squad car that got here around 2.45. Is the caretaker still here? He's in the living room. But I don't think you'll be able to get anything useful out of him. Poor guy's in shock. Wait, but this guy's dead though. How does a decapitated person play into this whole story you just told me? Who was the first person on the scene? That would be Baker. He's somewhere around here. It shouldn't be hard to find him. Okay. Okay, then what? When they stepped inside, the guys came face to face with that. Do we know who the victim is? Yeah, he had his ID on him. It's the owner, a guy named Jason Moore. What? I don't know who this guy pissed off, but things didn't work out too well for him. Did you secure all the exits and entrances to the building? Yes, we've got men on the ground floor and in the parking garage. How do you get to the parking garage? You'll have to ask the caretaker. He's the one who took my men down there. Oh my god, well he's dead already! Really? What have you got on Moore? He was an asset manager. But if you ask me, he was involved in some shady stuff that we're sure to find out about. It's not every day that an accountant gets his head chopped off. But why him specifically though? He was the asset manager? Sure, he was the financials guy. But... If we're thinking about this from the perspective that this might be related to the religious people who were trying to kill us, why would they bother going for him in his own house? Do we know if he had a family? Yeah, a wife and an eight-year-old daughter. The wife, Lydia Moore, 34 years old, architect, dual citizen of Costa Rica and the US, no criminal record. Yeah, we're trying to get a hold of her. The daughter, June, We've looked, and she's not here either. Both of them are gone? Where are the bodyguards? We haven't found anyone yet. Where is everybody? Go on. We're still looking for the head. Ooh. We're waiting on forensics for everything else, but they're busy with another case. What case? You haven't heard? At one international place. They say it was a real bloodbath. The party? So, you're here to take over the case? No, no. I'm working on something else. Moore's name popped up in one of our investigations, but I can't talk about it. Okay, I'll let my team know. Sense the Unseen. When Sense the Invisible is activated, Looking at a non-human character is enough to identify its nature. It's also possible to reveal the tracks left by a supernatural creature and learn more about it. Ah uh, yeah, we learned about this in the Codex. Cause Galeb spent a lot of time training with a gang girl who taught him how to track people. Agent Smith from the FBI is here. We're still in charge of the investigation, so please cooperate with him. Oh, that's a- I like that. That little walkie-talkie echo, it's pretty cool. Where in God's name is forensics? Yeah, I think they'll be a little bit busy with the other scenes, though. Sorry, Smith, but I've got work to do. Hey. Sorry, I'm busy. With what? I'm the FBI, you gotta help me. 
This sort of formal decor might impress Boston High Society, but not me. Are we inside the apartment already? Like, this is... This is massive. Sorry, I'm busy. You are not. Do you want me to send something around here? That's sensible. Moore's driver's license. The head of the body is not here, though. What if it's somebody else? Specialist banker, Jason Moore. Wait, so... There's tracks here. Does that mean that these tracks are supernatural, or what's going on? Jason? No, this is a human. Yeah, he's our financials guy. That does stuff for us in the daytime. I'm not sure what to do with this. Hold on. Ugh. There's a retainer here somewhere. A retainer. A mortal in the service of a vampire, commonly a ghoul. Isn't that what more is? Yeah? True faith. This is the one that we got when we were talking to Monsignor Stanford. A rare few mortals possess the unshakable faith with which they can detect, repel, and even harm the undead. A myth to most vampires, these mortals can hail from any religion, and if they so desire, can pose a very real threat to any damned they cross paths with. Oh. Unshakable faith. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like our seeing the unseen ability then. Except it comes from... their faith. So this turned red now, does that... Can we find more red elsewhere? No, we just learned that there's a retainer around here. Okay. Oh. He was decapitated. It was a pretty clean cut. Thank God. I'm educated. Hmm. The blow came from behind. When the person wasn't suspecting it? A signet ring with a beaver on it. More went to MIT. I don't know if MIT's thing is beaver. Actually, is it? Should I look this up? Am I supposed to know this? This is like an American thing. This isn't even made by Americans, right? MIT school animal. Or uh, mascot, I guess. Oh. Okay, it is a beaver. A beaver named Tim. I did not know that. But who would actually wear their college ring long after they graduate, though? That seems a bit tacky to me. Bullet wound in the right hip. In the front. Hmm. The flesh is burnt around the bullet hole. Over a wide area. He was shot at point-blank range. No doubt about it. Shot at point-blank and then... Decapitated from the back? There's almost no blood left in him. The injury was post-mortem, and the body must have been lying down. What? He got decapitated and then someone shot him in the front? Why? Okay. Oh, I'm not so convinced that this is more yet, because we just came here, and there's no head, no identification. Just an ID and a ring is not really enough to convince me, so we'll have to keep looking. Boston Police, District D4. Psychot Patropus Sit Deus Nobis. First in the Nation. Notebook. Mia Anderson. Ah, uh, timeline. Midnight. Jay Moore leaves with his bodyguards. 2 a.m. Moore returns, wounded with bodyguards, refuses Adams' help. Who's Adams? Is Adams the caretaker? 15 minutes later, Adams calls 911. 
10 minutes later, parking attendant sees Moore's car leave. Somebody left with Moore's car. There. 20 minutes later, Baker enters building, that's the police guy, questions Adams. Five minutes later, Lahane arrives shortly after. Who's Lahane? Why is the head missing? ID, trophy, proof of a hit? Wife and daughter, on vacation, with friends? Where are the bodyguards? Why hire them? Money laundering? Household staff? Nanny? Housekeeper? Nice apartment, renovated. Lydia's an architect. Why is her office so small compared to the husband's? Family's not here. And we have a body with a decapitated head that we can't even find the head of. Very suspicious. Where are the bodyguards? They weren't doing their job. <laughs> Wherever they are. Sorry, Smith, but I've got work to do. Wow, this is real fancy. My ship ended up at the bottom of the sea as well. Like my other lives. He's probably been on many ships. The one taking him from Constantinople to the west, and then from Europe to North America. Haha, <laughs> you can tell I read all the codex because I know all these things. <laughs> One of the weapons is missing. That could be the tool for decapitation, I guess. These are real swords. Oh, this guy likes to, um... He's pretty lavish. Pretty lavish lifestyle. Hmm. So where is the sword, then? There's people in there. Hold on. They wanted to bring a little vacation back home. This place is extremely massive. I guess I should be keeping the seen the unseen thing on. I don't like the sound, but it's helpful. When well, there's nothing in this room, isn't that weird? Not a single thing? Oh. We've got a greenhouse of some sort. Okay, this means we can feed. We can feed on people here. It seems like gardening is a real passion for Lydia. Not sure Jason shares your enthusiasm. Feel like you made some assumptions here already. But Caleb knows Jason, so maybe he knows that he doesn't like gardening. That must remind him of Costa Rica. It's a whole way of life there. Slow down and enjoy things, in contrast to Jason's life. Hectic? Working for vampires? Kind of, um, risky job, maybe? But hey, probably pays pretty well considering the size of your apartment. My apartment better be bigger than this. If a human's living like this, I've got to be living like a king. A real jungle in the heart of Boston. A truly peaceful oasis. Why were you looking for peace, Jason? Costa Rica. Wow. Polar star. I warned you, Jason. God, did I warn you. About what? About getting too close with the vampires? You are a vampire. We destroy all that we touch. Hmm, sounds like Gala might have cared about Jason on a more personal level. Okay, maybe let's read a little bit here.
We don't even have Jason here, really? Wow. April Bosley, Toreador, 1999, 12th generation. Sire is Robert S. Ziegler. April was born in 1970 in Boston's Bay Village neighborhood. She studied fashion in New York and then left to train across Europe, but then she came back to Boston and founded her own house of high fashion. Another Toreador, artsy people. The divas of Boston invited April into their social circle, where she found herself intoxicated by their charm, and that's probably where she met her sire, a well-known art collector. Their boundless passion pushed April to accept an embrace that she understood nothing about after only a few months. Oh, okay, so this is a little bit different then, because usually we, we learn that responsible sires would be like, you know, are you sure this is what it's going to entail and you're going to live forever, yada, yada, yada. But in April's case, seems like her sire was like, well, I just want to do it, so you're a vampire now, yay, that's it. However, her lover and sire quickly lost interest in her after the pride of flaunting his conquest in the most fashionable spots in Boston. Oh, that's terrible. The first years of April's unlife were spent alone, in solitude. She found refuge and support in one of M.M.'s clubs, where she learned all about her new nature and the history of the kindred. There, she met souls who were worn out by their mad hopes and suffering. It was in the club that she first met Hazel Iverson, a kindred whose embrace and abandonment by her sire reminded April of her own circumstances. Oh, so Hazel was also abandoned? April admired Hazel for the way she was able to turn the situation to her advantage. April offered Iverson her support and her services. In thanks for her loyalty, Hazel granted her the title of Herald when she took over the domain. Mm. By the way, I realized you can actually, you see at the bottom left corner there, I can press R3. And you can see people's skills and stuff. Holy crap, April's really good at talking. Damn. So this is nice if we want to aim for a specific skill set to do something with a certain person. But we don't know in advance who we're going to talk to, right? So I feel like, nice to see, but it's not really going to help me out too much, I guess. Hazel, did we read her already? I actually don't really remember reading this. I don't think I did. I might have skimmed it, but... Because I didn't know that she was sired by somebody irresponsible. Ventru, 1941, 10th generation. Sire is Nathan Appleton. Child is probably freaking dead because we never got her coffin back. <laughs> Sorry, Miley. Hazel was born to Scandinavian parents in 1901. Father went to the States to take advantage of business stuff. And in 15 years, he was prosperous. His daughter was equally brilliant in business, despite being a woman, especially back in the day. She convinced her father to go into banking, and it was great because now they're like rich and she's super smart and all that. Investors and rival banks realized that, you know, she's something special, so they killed her father to undermine her. Wow. The police and justice system didn't do anything for her. They declared his death a simple accident. Hazel found herself alone in charge of the Iverson Empire at just 38 years old, with no allies to speak of. The isolation pushed her to accept a meeting with a group of wealthy Boston financiers in order to ease tensions and competition. In actuality, Nathan Appleton, a deceased textile mogul, had set a trap. Against her will, he brought her back to unlife on her knees. Oh no, sparing her no humiliation. Appleton embraced her out of pride, not to be outdone by a woman on his own turf. Immediately, he neglected her and abandoned her to her own unlife. Hazel discovered on her own that she was undead. To protect them from the monster she had become, she needed to distance herself from those she loved, her mother, her family. She even considered ending her unlife, but surrender was not a part of her vocabulary. Oh, that's really tough. So I would assume that this is really frowned upon, right? Especially by the prince of the domain and all that. Because we saw in the other bios that if you get the blessing, then that's like the official way to do it. But if you don't, then you're just going against what the prince wants. And then because she was so brilliant and good at business, the court eventually accepted her. She planned her revenge on her sire for years. She proved to the prince that Appleton was double dealing with the British. Quentin King had no choice but to launch a blood hunt on Hazel's sire. And then she decapitated him in the exact spot where he had made her bend the knee. She spared the unlife of his bodyguard, Delson, who since that day became her shadow as a token of gratitude. Oh, hmm. That's interesting because 
I feel like if I were her, I wouldn't really trust Elson then because he used to work for my sire and my sire is not that great of a person, but no. Seems like they have an okay bond here. But her relationship with Quentin King grew strained over the years. So Hazel conspired with a group of dissenting Licks, the Kindred of Liberty. This organization was secretly working to take down King. Hazel was financially backing them. Which also led her to work with another group called the Gemini League. Mm -hmm. And then when the elders gave in to the beckoning, Quentin King disappeared, right? In 2014, the remaining members of the Primogen offered her their support in allowing her to claim the position of the prince. But she's very suspicious of everybody still. Why would they not keep the power for themselves? Therefore, she invited Kindred whose loyalty she was sure of to the council in order to dilute the influence of the Primogen. Oh, Richard is also a Primogen. I didn't know that. Hmm. And while the domain is under her control, the main thing that we've been doing is trusting Richard's research to bring us to new heights in the, in the areas of making better blood and all that. Better business, of course, of course. She is a venture after all. And now the alliance with the Harford Chantry, which is not going so well, so her reign might not be as stable as she wants it to be. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. the way we came from. Hmm. The apartment has changed since my last visit. This apartment is massive. That must be the caretaker. Jason, Lydia, and June. The little family all together. And in large format. Jason. Proud of his family and his success. He should be, providing well for his family. Lydia, radiant and beaming. And missing. <laughs> June, who looks more like Jason than Lydia. Well, we can't really control these things. His MIT class ring, right where you can't miss it. The same one I saw on the body. That seems like such a particular observation to make. Who wears their class ring? Like, that's so... I guess because MIT is prestigious, but it just seems a bit pretentious to me. Maybe because I'm not an MIT graduate. <laughs> Notebook. Tyler Hale. Are you Tyler? Ethan Adams, 60, concierge butler. Good relations with the Moors. Present at the scene. Moore came back around 2 a.m., wounded, with bodyguards. Need more info, but Mr. Adams was in a state of shock. Feels guilty. Thinks he could have done more. FBI. Loyal, professional, friendly, Sitting old school. Gallery. Meticulous, educated. I have to question him. He's still freaked out. I don't think it's the right time. We might be able to help with that. We can control people's emotions. Somebody slept here. These couches are massive, holy crap. Did you see what happened? You called the police when you realized that Jason was injured, right? But then what happened after that? Mr. Adams. No, this can't be happening. What a nightmare. So much blood. I've got a few questions. I tried to help him. I told him we should call 911. I told him. Let's calm him down. Sir, listen to me. It's all right. Calm down. You're safe and you did the right thing. I did the right thing. I need you to answer a few questions for me. I... I... <sighs> yes, of course. What do you want to know? Did you know Mr. Moore well? 
We weren't friends, if that's what you're asking. But we got to know each other. With time. <laughs> he was a creature of habit. Since he worked late, he would often ask me for things at night. A newspaper, batteries, ice. I, I think he asked me for just about everything. I prided myself on always being able to get what he needed, no matter what time it was. You'd have thought he pretty much lived after dark. Like his clients. Hmm. <laughs> mm. That's tough. Because he can only meet vampires at night, but then he himself also has to do stuff during the day. No wonder he's getting paid so well. Did Mr. Moore have many visitors? For a man with his status, it was nothing surprising. But, well... Yes? His visitors mostly came in the middle of the night. I must admit, that's a little unusual. That's what working for us is like. He told me he had a lot of foreign clients, and he had to juggle different time zones. That's what working from home is like. He had colleagues over for late night meetings too. <laughs> but since little June was born, not as many people came around. That was wise. At some point, you make so much money, feel like you need to make a decision for yourself. Okay, well, I have a um, family now, I have a daughter. Do I really need to make so much money that I neglect her or even place her in danger by having a bunch of shady people coming around all the time, I guess? I mean, we, we work with Jason more, but we're dangerous. From a human perspective, we're really dangerous. What if one day we get pissed off and we just kill him? Like what seems to have happened here. Did he have any enemies that you were aware of? No. He was a very respectable man. No bad company or anything. Except for us. This is a strange question. Without any disrespect to the deceased, were you aware of any extramarital affairs he may have had? Mr. Moore was a good man. He would never have disrespected his wife, or even contemplated it, I'm sure. She could have been okay with it. <laughs> there were no young women coming and going. That's a very inappropriate question. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I would have to agree. That was very, very strange. Like, do you have a basis for why you're asking that? It just seems like it was out of the blue. Do you know his wife? Mrs. Moore is a model resident. She always has something nice to say to the staff. And is the first to welcome new neighbors, too. A true lady. They're like the perfect American family. White picket fence and all. Do you know where she is? Mr. Moore told me she'd gone to their home in Costa Rica. She goes there pretty often. <laughs> She's an architect. And she likes to work in her home country. She has family there. Did she bring their daughter? Do you think anyone could have been so angry with her that they could have taken it out on her husband? Oh, no. I don't think so. It's true that lots of people could have been jealous of her. But not to that point. Wait, 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 wait. We're coming here with the understanding that probably Jason, he would have died because of something related to vampires, right? So are we actually suspecting that the wife would have anything to do with it? Because if the wife was a human, involved in architecture, that just doesn't seem like it's even the right thing to be thinking about. Why do we keep asking this? Oh my god. Dude, he's gonna focus. He's gonna focus. All in. All in. Oh! Yes! Do you think she could have been having an affair? She's a very respectable woman who loves her husband very much. I don't know what sick kind of world <laughs> you live in. And you would certainly not like to find out. They had their ups and downs, just like any couple. Uh, the staff had noticed that she went to Costa Rica fairly often without her husband. Was she thinking of leaving him? Not at all. Just the opposite. She begged him to spend more time with her and their daughter. Maybe there's a man and... Or, you know... Or a woman in Costa Rica. 
Yeah. We haven't seen any evidence that says otherwise yet, but it's very strange to me that we asked this, so might be something to keep an eye on. I imagine the girl left with her mother. Not at all. It was the start of the school year, and Mrs. Moore left two weeks ago. I haven't seen her since Monday, when Mr. Moore took her to school on the first day. She must be staying with a friend. I... Poor little thing. Thank heaven she wasn't here. Everyone just happens to be out of the house? Do you know his bodyguards? Yeah, there's uh, Jack, James, and Wu. But you won't hear me singing their praises. Why not? Oh, they're good at strutting around and acting tough when everything is going well. But where were they tonight? Can you tell me that? That was their job, right? They were paid to... to protect him. According to the timeline we saw... Okay, so Jason went to the party at some point before... between midnight and two. And then he came back injured with his bodyguards. And then this guy called the police. And then somehow... We have a decapitated body here, plus somebody left in Moore's car. Do I have it right? That's... okay. Did they leave by the car? What do you mean by acting tough? <laughs> More than once I overheard them talking to Mr. Moore, like they were his boss. The world upside down. They worked for us, just like your dear Mr. Moore. I hope they won't find another job anytime soon. Or are the bodyguards like vampires keeping an eye on more? Tell me about the evening again, please. What happened tonight? <sighs> Mr. Moore left with his, his three bodyguards uh, earlier in the evening. One of them got in the car and Mr. Moore came down around midnight. And then? They came back around 2 a.m. Uh, Mr. Moore was limping. He... he was leaning on one of his bodyguards, and... He, he was bleeding. Was he injured? I told him I could call an ambulance or a doctor, but he didn't answer. I went closer to insist, but Wu told me they were in control of the situation, that it was no big deal. They went upstairs, and I saw drops of blood in front of the elevator. I told myself they were being unreasonable. What did those two goons know about it? So I called Mr. Moore on the internal line. Several times. Did he pick up? Not once. So I went upstairs and rang the doorbell. But nobody answered. So I went back down to the front desk and I called you. Wu was the one who called in the code red. But we don't know where he is anymore. The lieutenant told me there was an access to the basement. <sighs> yes, uh, using the service elevator th through the kitchen. <sighs> you need a magnetic pass to use it. I gave the spare to your colleagues who wanted to go down there. I still have the original. Do you want it? Please. Okay. Thank you for your statement. You have to find out who did this, officer. Justice needs to be done for him. <laughs> and for his family. And we need to find out who's messing with us. That's what we're here for. You can count on us. Stick around in case we have more questions. So this guy has a family. All of them are not here for some reason. On vacation at a friend's house. This guy also has some bodyguards. Also not here for some reason. We know some people left by car. Okay. Oh my god, this place is... Dude, look at all this like extra room. This place is massive.
I... hello. Why is the FBI interested in more? His name came up in several financial investigations we're working on. Sorry, Smith. A little busy here. So I'll remember to drink you when I'm hungry. Sorry, Smith. A little busy here. Looks like Lydia's planner. Lydia's life seems to revolve around June and her home in Costa Rica, with Jason often absent. Busy? 2019 August. 7. Visit Grandpa at San Jose. 10. Goodbye Costa Rica. 15. Pick June to pick June up to painting class. 17. Buy new book. Hashtag streets from Catherine Bergman. 22nd, 10 a.m. New architecture project for Boston Museum. In case of emergency, call Pura Vida. Pura Vida. Call Pura Vida. Okay. Is that a person's name? Beneath the sticky note there, if someone... That's all we get to see. Come on. It'll pass. Don't worry. The dinner of a mortal who's at the end of their rope. That doesn't seem very fitting with the rich family here. You're having pizza and canned food? That seems weird. Who'd leave that lying around? It's not even eaten! They ate none of it. Oh my gosh, is that real or is that just an electronic picture? You gotta be careful about the interaction dots. Sometimes they're so damn small. You okay, dude? There are bloody prints on these bags. <laughs> oh, from the the body? When I knew him, he took better care of himself. What's going on with him? He has butlers and stuff. He doesn't have to cook. Why? What? Is, what's happening? Are you all right? Yeah, just a little faint. I was expecting it, but then... Uh, give me a minute and I'll, I'll head back. The sight of blood. We've all been there, haven't we? No. <laughs> yeah, well, blood is one thing, but the head is decapitated, okay? That's... that's a bit... Oh god. Oh, there are blood stains on the garbage chute. Can we... Can we investigate that somehow? Hmm. Ugh, what a stench. What is wrong with this house? There's no cleaning being done. He's losing it. You know what? His marriage is probably not going that well. It seems like it is, but probably some big marital problems here and Jason is being left alone. While Lydia is taking June, I guess. 